Get to this couldn't see in our camp. This man is a known spy. Uh, that's a weighty accusation, Corporal. Well, he was felt with better than his person. Can't think she was our cease to come. Or perhaps even our provision. Major, you did not inform me that a known spy was among the Marquis' assets. Uh, Lafayette intended to inform the staff this evening, sir. It will all be in the report that I present. Corporal uh, Francis, was it? Aye. Right. Remove his hood and wait outside. You'll be called when you're needed. Now, Armistead. Perhaps you'll entertain a few of my questions. But sir, this is hardly something a general officer needs to concern himself with. Not at all, Major. I might be Washington's chief of staff, but I'm not above a... Uh, team? Now, Armistead. My men call you a spy. Tell me, where did you come from before you came here? From the British camps, sir. Ah, I see. And were you living with them? The British, I mean? Yes, sir. Working for them? Under the protection of the Phillipsburg Proclamation, perhaps? Yes, sir. I cooked for them, sir. For the entire camp? No, sir. For the senior officers. Oh, so I seem to think that some of these senior officers might <coughs> notice if you were to go. They might, sir. Cornwallis might, for example? Perhaps, sir. And yet, this report makes no mention of anyone pursuing you or of anyone attempting to impede your passage to us. It's almost as if Cornwallis knew of your leaving and approved of it. Yes, sir. I see how some might draw that conclusion. Oh, you're sharp. Clever, even. <clears throat> Here's what I'm thinking. Cornwallis notices that you're clever, too. Cornwallis says to himself, well, here's an intelligent young man, and these rebels surround themselves with slaves. They won't notice one or two more. Sir, why am I being questioned? <laughs> you seem to know the answers already. Brazen. That's the word for you. Do you acknowledge or deny that you are here under orders from the British? I am most certainly here under orders of the British. I received my instructions from no one lower than Lieutenant Colonel Lord Chewton, Chief Aide de Camp to General Lord Cornwallis. And at any time, did Lords Cornwallis or Tuchin suspect that you're already passing intelligence along to us? But sir, passing intelligence sir, to us? so far as I'm aware, the British Army are completely in the dark as to my work for the United States Army. <laughs> Major, I, uh, <coughs> seem to think I don't have quite the grasp on the situation I thought I did. It was all to be in my report this evening, sir. Honor said here is indeed one of Lafayette's assets, but not as a prisoner, as intelligence. Why him? I came to the Marquis' attention when I served briefly as his orderly. Yes, and impressed Lafayette as being an intelligent and above all trustworthy man. Well, we sent him to infiltrate Cornwallis's base, which he did admirably. What we could not have predicted was that Cornwallis would use him as a spy against us. But this sort of thing is, to my knowledge, unprecedented. Uh, I don't know, Major. This is not how wars are supposed to be fought. <laughs> but I can't impede you. Uh, Get up even present. Proceed. Now then, James, if I'm able to make sense of these notes, we were just beginning the discussion of the uh, fortifications at Yorktown, correct? I believe so, sir. Now, as best as you're able to observe, what varieties of fortifications did you see? And uh, Esther, estimate the number of masonry works versus earthworks. Well, there aren't any masonry works, sir, only earthworks. See. And the construction of the readouts. Anything you can describe? Well, there have been some arguments about the fortifications at Gloucester Point. Well, what kind of arguments? Please, General. One of their chief engineers, I keep hearing the name Sutherland, he has been put in charge of building those works. But one of the commanders of the Prussian forces, and I could not make out his name, he has complained that no offensive structures were built into the redoubts in their original construction. They are having to be put in later at considerable time and expense. Major, if this is true, the oh, construction began. Oh, hold! A word, Major. Major, I can appreciate this man as Lafayette's resource. And if the Frenchman appears to give you a free hand to act in his stead, but I am not prepared to be interrupted by a subordinate officer. You apologize, sir. I intended no offense. I was really trying to prevent you from giving any way of our information to him. You were just about to discuss tactics right in front of him, sir. 
What of it? He's our spy. And Cornwallis may be saying the exact same thing to Chewton at this very moment. Oh, wait a minute. You think they could turn him? Or that they already have him? I thought you said you trusted him, Major. I do, because Lafayette does. And I don't think that he's been turned. But if the British were to find him out, he will be compromised, whether that be by cooperation or coercion. That is why I cannot reveal, even to him, what of his information we know or do not know already. Like that bit about the Earth. Now, we knew that there weren't any masonry works in your kind. We sent writers. Indeed. Just as we'll send writers to confirm what James has to say about Foster Point. If we're going to send writers anyway, then why do we need him? <clears throat> Standing on a hill looking down at the enemy's camp, you can't get information like this. Now, when Wallace was under orders to send half his men up to New York to reinforce Clinton, but here we see those orders being rescinded at a later date. This lets us know the exact date Clinton learned that Washington was headed for Virginia. I think you're putting too much emphasis on picking you matters. There's no reason to be so guarded. James, if you were Cornwallis's man... I'm not, if, sir. If you were, and Cornwallis were to question you about this man here, what could you tell him? And, if you please, your candor would be greatly appreciated. One star that makes him a brigadier general. You have not referred to him by name, but he identified himself as Washington's chief of staff. I'm certain that Cornwallis could identify him, even if I could not. Your disagreements do suggest a lack of unity among the staff, or simply between Washington's forces and Lafayette's. Either one could be exploited. Also, the way the general keeps leaping through your papers as your back is turned does signify... <laughs> <laughs> Well, if I were not a part of this meeting, if I were on the outside looking in, I'd wonder why Washington's chief of staff had taken such an interest in a simple imprisoned slave. Might make me think that slave situation isn't as simple as I thought. Huh. What's he going to do next? Guess my weight? Well, if I had to, sir. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what this exercise was supposed to prove, Major, but now I trust him even less. Who's to say he's not going to turn this all over to Cornwallis? Now you understand what it is to be a spy master. You have to entertain that even your most trusted resources are working against you. Out of everything you're told, you confirm what you can and what you cannot, you use you, your you, you best judgment. Or even if he's being honest with us, perhaps his resources aren't being honest with him. I don't see how that's worth it. If we've got to put that much work we're into it anyway, then why don't we continue to waste resources on this? Which brings me to an interesting question, Major. What has this man been promised? Has this man been promised something that, that the Lafayette does not have the authority to grant him? Did the Marquis promise him his freedom? That's not why I'm doing this, sir. Oh, well, now I know I don't believe him, Major. So how can you trust this man, Major? Here we are, the only man in Virginia, the only slave in Virginia who doesn't want his freedom. If doing this gets me my freedom, then of course I would not refuse it, but it was never promised to me. How do you trust him when you don't even know what he really wants? Begging your pardon, sir. Yes, sir, I am a slave. Legal property to William Armistead of Elizabeth City. And yes, sir, I do want my freedom. But we're not so single-minded about that as you might think. If we were, each and every single last one of us would have run off to the British the first time they offered it. Now, I can only speak for myself, sir, but freedom is but one in a list of things that I want. My family all together, some land, I want to farm. But people want things that they know they're probably never going to get. Doesn't stop them living their lives. You got thousands of soldiers here who likely started out as poor Virginia farmers. They were struggling before when we were a colony. They're still struggling now we're states. And whichever way this war goes, sir, there still will be struggling. I don't but that do you with... ask the poor Virginia farmer why he is fighting? The gentlemen talk about politics and philosophy, and maybe the farmer is concerned with those things, maybe. But one thing you can be certain of, sir, is that he is defending his country. The land he was born on, where he's always lived, and where he's surrounded by each and everything he has ever known and loved. He is serving his country in the way he was asked to do so. And so why should I be any different? Am I any less Virginian because I am a slave? Does my living in bondage mean that I can't believe in something? This is my country, sir. Now, I may have worked this land for another man, but I still know the soil, and I have it in my veins, and I will defend it. I'm no different than any other man in that army, but I was not asked to serve Virginia as a soldier. I was asked to serve her as a spy, 
And if that is what I can do, sir, then let me do it. Because this is my home. gone on beyond what I had planned, and we both have more work to do. Of course. I'll call for you again this evening, James, and we'll finish these discussions. I'll also uh, give your disinformation give to Court Wallace. Yes, sir. Uh, when uh, Lafayette conducts this interview, this is normally where I go and get the corporal and have him taken out again. I'm going to go and get the corporal and have him taken out again. <laughs> Now, I have no particular quarrel with you, fellow. It's this ridiculous game. This spy business is not how wars are supposed to be fought, or won. You compared yourself to our soldiers, but I'm not certain that's accurate. Our soldiers depend on each other. They have to. They're in a position of trust. That trust is, is forged by the repeated presence of shared danger. But you, by which I mean any spot, your business is in lies, distrust, secrets, a celebration of the very worst of humanity, and I do not believe that our nation should profit from such acts. Sir, the corporal is just outside. I see. You got to take him back to the guardhouse then? Of course so. Well, no matter my feelings on it, the man is performing a service for the Army. Can't we find him some better accommodations? Uh, Please don't. Whoa, sir. what's this? Sir, when Wallace believes that Armistead is his spy, but we can't afford to believe he's his only spy, how's it going to look when this suspected spy is given a private room at the Raleigh Tower? Yes, 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 of course. I, I misspoke. Obviously, we can't jeopardize our operation here. Not only that, sir, but Armistead's life. What? Sir. Mm -hmm. You served on Major Andre's court martial. You understand the situation that James is in. Major Andre was one of the most respected English officers from either side, but that could not save him when he was declared a spy. And Andre Hank. Yes, sir. So, even though those soldiers might hate me, please do not tell them what I'm doing. It could likely kill me. Everything's set, James. Tonight. When I give you a report, I will give you the key to your manacles. There will be some kind of a distraction, I haven't decided what yet, that will call your guards away from their post. They'll be delayed just long enough to give you a head start. They will be behind you. But Major, send a detachment of men who know what's going on here to put on a show of pursuit. You don't understand, sir. Those men must not be told. As far as they are concerned, uh, Armistead is an English spy making his way back to Fort Walls with a head full of packs. A oh, hold, Major! Those men would kill him to stop it! So I'll need to be fast. You said something earlier about the repeated presence of danger. I don't know anything about that. My danger is constant, and it comes from both sides. <clears throat> you know this. You are fully aware of this, and yet you willingly put yourself into this situation. Why on earth would you do that? It is how I was asked to serve my home. Corporal? Sure. Step back. It could be sobering. <clears throat> Speak of intelligence in our meetings just like any other supply. One we cannot conduct any kind of action without. And it is men like that who gather most of it. The spies, the unknown, unobserved. A man hated by the very soldier whose well being he helps restore. Sir, if you'll excuse me, I wish to consult with General Lafayette about this matter. I, I will attend you, Major. Of course. 